Hello, my name is Kendall Jenkins, and today I'm going to be discussing some of the works being shown at Meant to be Looked at, an exhibition that's held at the University of Mary Washington in the UMW Convergence Gallery. So, the first work I wanted to discuss was originally untitled, but has since been given the name Woman on the Subway. Sutton painted this in 1942 and is a clear example of how she used the techniques that she learned studying under Hans Hoffmann, such as his work on color theory and his push-pull method of painting, and applied it using the elements of the Cubist and Surrealist movement, which were very popular during the 1940s at this time. Notice that, though the background remains largely neutral, Sutton includes elements of motion, such as the red, light blue, and dark blue elements that are streaming from the exit light which is in the top right corner of this piece as well as the various light blue light blue and yellow elements that are mixed together to give the painting a sense of motion in that the train car that the lady is sitting in might be pulling into or leaving from a station but the main subject of this piece the woman herself is the most fascinating aspect of this work the woman herself is crafted with bold curving lines that are carefully colored and coordinated to contain the chaotic assembly of various contrasting warm and cool colors that make up the majority of this woman's bodily elements as well as her clothing. What's truly fascinating about using this watercolor medium on such a small scale is that Sutton made so many segmented pieces to the woman's body, like the checkered pattern that we see on the woman's shirt as well as her skirt which not only is well contrasted, but also provides focus to the objects that are at the center of the, of the painting in the woman's lap. This painting, titled Two Girls Reading, was painted by Pablo Picasso and was part of his exposition at the, exposition at the Museum of as the Metropolitan Museum of Art and was exhibited from the middle of November 1939 to early January of 1940, and may have been one of the works that Sutton encountered while making this piece. And you can see the inspiration due to the various spatial elements that Picasso uses, as well as the very bold lines and contrasting colors that he uses to make up the majority of the woman's spatial features, as well as their body and clothing. The next work I want to discuss was also entitled but became known as The Woman Knitting. It was most likely painted within the same year, and what is interesting is that it emphasizes the use of shadows as well as carefully layered watercolor to add a sense of depth and liminality, which provides a sense of focus on the subject of the painting, but also adds an odd sense of familiarity, which is obstructed by the abstracted figure. If you take a moment to notice the various elements of the background, such as the bench, as well as her bag on the right, you will notice a uh, amount of X's, dashes, and dots that are common in Sutton's paintings and are used to often create texture or uh, symbolize another certain element of the piece. And this is not uncommon to a lot of the works within this exhibition itself. Sutton does an excellent job to keep the woman at the center of the work by ensuring that the colors of the background are rather beige, but certain elements, such as her bag and purse, consist of the same colors of the woman's body, as well as the outline that contained the woman's upper body herself. In comparison with her commuting counterpart, instead of using bold lines to separate the majority of the woman, Sutton instead opted to let the colors clash into one another to create form from her focused and content expression to the dark and cool colors of her dress clashing against the vibrant project that she's working on. Roger de la Fresne's The Conquest of Air could have been an inspiration for the woman knitting. 
This piece was exhibited in Art, the Art of Our Time exhibition from May to September of 1939, and as you can see, exhibits a lot of the similar shading techniques as well as the idea of using contrasting yet similar colors to create form and various geometric elements combined with a little bit of shading to provide a more dreamlike and liminal space that is familiar but yet altogether abstract.